Now, did you know actually the Necromancer is the best class in all of Diablo 2 Resurrected? Yeah, that's the case I'm making here in this video today. Head down in the comments, let me know if you agree or disagree and why. And hey, if you like the video, if you end up enjoying it, hit that like button and subscribe up for future Diablo 2 Resurrected content. Now, first of all, talking about a character being the absolute best, I mean, why don't you start off at the very beginning, the actual playthrough of the game. And when you're talking about the playthrough for the Necromancer, generally you don't go into one of the skills that you use actually at the end of the game, much like other things, but usually people go poison on different builds, not on the Necromancer. Usually you start off with teeth and then on, after teeth, you're going to come down corpse explosion. You get kind of as soon as you can. It's so powerful early and even later and eventually you come down bone spear. I usually play through on bone spear for quite a while until I want to get into whatever build I want to do. And then usually that ends up being a actually summoning necromancer, which I have this character specced out as. But on the playthrough, if you end up uh, eventually, this is probably like nightmarish, you go into the summon necro, your team's absolutely going to love you. When you have these skeletons out everywhere, really taking the damage, taking the brunt of the attacks from the monsters, then you can just lob attacks. Your entire party you can just lob, lob, lob attacks one after another. On top of that, there's all these different types of curses that you can use. Over on the curses tree, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and toss lower res, which is going to increase the amount of damage they take from different elemental attacks. You see it has minus 32 resist all down there, or you got amp damage to help out the physical attacks and stuff like that. So, and there really is even more. Decrepify absolutely slows down even the act bosses. So if you get Decrepify really high, Diablo Bale or something like that, you're never going to struggle you and your party ever again because you can really slow them down with these different curses. The poison of bone skills are great. Bone armor is a great one point wonder and you can get it really high with a ton of plus skills like I have. The way this is particularly specced out now and also um, the three main builds once you eventually get towards the end or finish up the campaign. The poison one with poison nova you could go bone which is the bone spear that is probably the least commonly used but my favorite one of my favorite characters actually I put it in my top three list the summon necro of my favorite characters of all time. But just know if you didn't know this, I'm sure most of you did. Every single Necromancer build is based around the skill Corpse Explosion because it is so incredibly powerful. Now, Necromancer, and I do have really, really godly gear here. I'm going to go over just a second. But honestly, the summon Necro, you can literally be completely naked, march into the Hell Chaos Sanctuary and absolutely slap down the entire area. That's how powerful this character is, and your summons are almost invincible once you have a ton of points into them. Um, you deal a ton of damage out. Just throwing out amp damage curse and using corpse explosion, melting things down. You are going to rely on your mercenary, essentially, between your mercenary and your skeletons, getting at least one monster kill. And most of the damage is coming from your mercenary. And once that first kill goes down, you just start popping bodies and just start blowing up the entire room. The character is really absolutely amazing. Like I said, even with no gear, you can throw on a butt budget caster system like you throw on a ton of characters you're going to have dual spirit even if you just have a stealth a lore helmet just any random stuff like that a few fcr rings along those and you're going to be a-ok -okay. and what really sets this build off is getting yourself a tele staff or even more specifically the nage's puzzler which i do have in the inventory right here it has all those teleport charges you can literally run chaos sanctuaries as if you had an enigma if you have this nage's puzzler on swap you can literally teleport all around the entire chaos sanctuary, clear the whole joint before the charges run out, and then just pay to repair them at the end of the run. I will note, though, it's like 100 and 120,000 gold to repair each and every run, so you're going to have to pick up and sell some stuff along the way. So right now, I have this set up as a sick endgame necromancer for the summoner, and I'm going to go over exactly what I got on. If you ever thought about using this exact one, it's my favorite one because it's so easy. I love builds. That are super easy so it's a pr almost a pretty standard caster setup it really actually is we got hoto spirit shako enigma for all the stuff obviously on there this is a little bit just kind of a neat amulet a ton of strength uh faster cast rate all resistance and summoning skills because i am using a summoning so i just went ahead and wanted to have actually summoning skills on the amulet you could go with a caster amulet that had two to all skills which would boost up your corpse explosion radius a little bit and some things like that but i want to go with this just for a little cool factor We've got Trang's Gloves, uh, Arachnid's Mesh, Alder's Boots to get that Fire Res, Walk Run, and a bunch of life. And we got a couple SOJs to boost that up, along with, 
obviously a call to arms and a spirit on the other side. Poison and bone skillers down here, obviously, boosting up the corpse explosion damage. So I decided to go with that. You could throw some summoning skillers down in here if you wanted to boost the life and the damage on the summons. We obviously have a Geese Grand Charm. We got a torch and you would want to go ahead and throw an Annie over here as well. There she is. I kind of forgot about it, but you want to have a torch and Annie over here, obviously, as well. And you might be wondering, Phil, why do you have this uh, insight right here? And why don't you have the insight on the pole arm? It's a little bit behind me, but I have an obedience over here just to kind of show you. You don't actually have to have the insight over here on your Act 2 Mercenary. We've got the Tal's Mask and Treachery, just an FYI for some, you know, it's just kind of a budget setup, really. Not even a uh, Infinity, which would actually help the build out over here. But uh, I went ahead and throw an Obedience just to do it. I'm going to lean over a little bit. You do see there's a little bit of cold damage right whoop, here, which is kind of a negative. Some people want to steer clear of having any cold damage in a Mercenary because then the Mercenary will kill a monster. Then you won't be able to corpse explode it because it shatters. That'll happen sometimes. But I went ahead and threw it on over here. And also, note, do get a Might Mercenary. But if you want the Mana Regen, whoop, just throw an Insight on the ground and go ahead and bring up a Iron Golem out of an Insight. Now, that in, that Golem right there actually has the Meditation Aura, so I will replenish my life. And that is why when you actually build this character, we're looking at the summons. We're maxing out Skeleton and uh, Skeleton and Mastery to keep those alive a ton. We actually will only put one point into Iron Golem. We max out Golem Mastery because you get 720% extra life from that. And you actually get no extra life from putting more levels into the Iron Golem itself. It gets more Thorns damage and defense, but it does not get any more life. So we want it just to pretty much stay alive to carry around our Meditation Aura. So we keep it alive with Golem Mastery. We also do, I get down to get one point into Revive and then... It goes up and up and up based upon the extra skill points that we have from our gear. Because when you go against bosses, the summons and your mercenary aren't really dueling out a whole lot of damage. So bringing up a bunch of revives just to go against, like, usually I use this for the Cast Sanctuary, clearing out Diablo. Bring up those revives and it can really chop Diablo down a lot faster. And just to kind of round out the build, super easy, one point wonder into armor, max out corpse explosion, and we maxed out amp damage. That way our, our mercenary and our summons are dealing out more damage. Half of Corp Explosion is physical and half is fire. So that's why if you had an Infinity, it would actually boost up the damage of your Corp Explosion. It would boost up half of that damage anyways, but the amp damage helps out the other half that is indeed physical. Now let's go and see how great this build is in action. Huh? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now first off, an incredibly easy place to go ahead and get yourself some skellies is just to head out here to where you go after Pindle and you can actually raise up these skeletons right here. Boom, 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 easy peasy. You can get yourself a whole bunch of skeletons just like that. And even raising up all those skeletons, you see with the meditation aura, whoop, your mana just comes right back up. And we'll just go to an easy spot. First off, I don't even know if this is on players one or two or not, but go ahead and throw out your amp damage. You go ahead and wait for your mercenary to kill one monster. And then go ahead and corpse explode the whole joint. There we go, monster down, dark corpse exploding, and it melts down. And you see, it takes almost literally no effort. You can just stand back behind your crowd, wait for something to go down, and then you can go ahead and start corpse exploding him. We'll go ahead and take a look, and yeah, actually this is on player's eight difficulty. I did not realize it. There we've got a guardian angel. Nice, cooler to be ethereal, but it is what it is. This is actually, I'm starting off, usually I go players 1 to sh just to go ahead and show. But yeah, this is players 8 right off the bat. I thought it was taking a little bit of, of time here, uh, which it was. But that's alright. There's players 8 difficulty slapping down uh, Eldritch and Shank. See, sometimes the bosses having more health will take a little bit longer of time. Now that was players 8, but here's more of what it's made for. It's really more of a players 1 and players 3 type of build. So we're going to go ahead and test her out for you and show you kind of the more of the full potential. We just kind of target the champion packs such as hit him with the amp damage, corpse explode, move on. Oof, almost another one of them griffins, fellas. Look at that. Ah, ha, ha. Interesting, interesting. But yeah, hit him with the amp damage, corpse explode. And they all melt. This is player's three difficulty right here. And this is more what I would really use this character for, to be honest. You can still find all the same high runes. You can find all the same uniques 
running the pits on players one, three, and the highest, you are gonna have a better chance on players eight difficulty of getting more high runes. That is if you're killing faster, but it just kills so fast down here and the pits absolutely melting. I would generally go with the players three or even players one perhaps even, but players three is, is great as well. And then we'll go ahead and hit the Chaos Sanctuary. We're still amped up, no big deal. Let's just hit the Chaos Sanctuary. Players three with this exact same build. Down goes one monster, corpse explode, and boom. Down the pack goes. Let's get into a little bit little bit bigger pack here. I don't know, I guess this will do. One of them goes down. You just kind of hold down the corpse explosion button, wave your mouse around the pack, and it just blows up everything. And we'll, hey, keep that going over here. Pop, 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 pop. Amp those guys up that are coming from that side. Spin it around. Wait for everything to die. Move on. And here's the part where if you do go against bosses like Diablo, this is what I like to do. Bring up as many of these other monsters as you can. It will really speed up the kill here. Especially on Diablo, the larger bosses. Just tally stomp them. Put amp damage and they'll chop him down. I do teleport to the other side just to make sure he doesn't rip my my mercenary out so I don't have to revive him, but... It's still not the fastest kill of the uh, boss here, and he actually ripped down my mercenary because I wasn't paying attention. But, it is what it is. So disregard my poor play letting my mercenary die. Poor Emilio. But, this is why I'm arguing here today that the Necromancer is the best character in all of Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. Or if you agree with me, let me know down in the comments as well. Why? Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. But before you go, if you enjoyed the video, peace out and keep slaying.